Saddam Hussein and his sons must leave Iraq within 48 hours. Their refusal to do so will result in military conflict. Saddam refused to leave. First came the so-called shock and awe airstrikes. Then the US military pushed into Iraq, backed by Poland, Australia and Britain. Tonight, British servicemen and women are engaged from air, land and sea. Their mission? To remove Saddam Hussein from power and disarm Iraq of its weapons of mass destruction. After an intense manhunt, Saddam was captured, put on trial and executed. But there was a problem. There were no weapons of mass destruction. Despite this, many Iraqis did initially welcome the U.S. troops. The wish for change was a dream for Iraqis. Therefore, toppling the former Iraqi government was not a mistake. What happened after it fell was that we failed to provide a good example with our politics. Shiite Muslims who had been marginalized under Saddam found new freedom. Sunnis who had been favored by Saddam suddenly found themselves out of work and often persecuted. The disbanded largely Sunni army morphed into an insurgency while Shiite leaders founded militias. They targeted each other, the coalition forces, but mostly civilians. Hundreds of thousands died. The U.S. military also became embroiled in a series of controversies, including the treatment of detainees at Abu Ghraib prison. Out of the chaos arose extremist groups like al-Qaeda in Iraq and ultimately ISIL, which managed to easily overrun predominantly Sunni areas, many of which had complained of persecution since the fall of Saddam. ISIL has now been defeated and the guns are largely silent. The final verdict might be that the fall of Saddam Hussein and the occupation of Iraq brought some good, but also an unimaginable degree of suffering to a nation that is only just beginning to recover from a decade and a half of bloodshed. Jack Barton, CGTN, Baghdad.